Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Borgy, and this is going to be a review of the Microsoft Wheel Mouse Optical. This mouse is older than I am. It came out in August of 2002, and I came out in October of 2002. This mouse was sent out to me by GameSense. Yes, the company. They're coming out with their own rendition of the wheel mouse optical so they've had to have one in house and they decide to send it out for me to review it so massive thank you to them uh, but yeah make sure to leave a like and sub and yes mouse review um so obviously since this mouse is so old i am not allowed to say anything bad about it it is simply immune to all criticism because it is a legend and that is all for the review Aha, uh -huh, fooled you. Review's not over. But I was talking to some boomers, and it seems that the general consensus is that when this mouse was released, it was easily the best thing on the market. And that's kind of fucking sick. Um, because, like I said, it's older than me. But when I really think about that, this mouse has existed longer than I have. Um, these clicks genuinely feel like almost up to par with like what you would feel on a mouse now. Um, it's really shown me that not much has changed in the past like 20 years in terms of mice. Um, it's not the first mouse to have a scroll wheel, which I kind of thought it was because, you know, wheel mouse optical. Um, but I guess they just wanted to specify that the mouse has a wheel and also the optical sensor um, even though it wasn't the first to have those. I mean, you know, it's not confusing. I'm just not understanding it. Um, also, I do want to note, this is one flaw, but of course it's not a flaw because the mouse is perfect. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but there is an absurd amount of side-to-side -side play on the clicks. And I have no idea how much use this mouse has on it, so I don't know if that was like a widespread QC issue. I guess if you ever used a WMO, let me know if there's tons of wobble on the clicks. And I was able to slightly mitigate the issue, um, basically by just putting a bit more pressure um, and like, I guess, like holding the clicks down a bit while I was moving the mouse around, just a bit more than I normally would. And it was able to mitigate it. But these switches, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what they are. I did like five, 10 minutes of research. I couldn't find out. One review said they were Omrons. I don't know if that's true. Doesn't really matter, um, but they were honestly surprisingly tactile. I'll do a sound test. And that was a sound test, and it just makes me think to myself, like, holy shit, these switches more or less sound the same as, like, modern-day Wanos. I'm honestly not sure what switches are in this house. I did, like, five minutes of research, and I figured it would come up on, like, my first Google search, but I, I just straight up couldn't find out. Um, I even looked at teardowns, and they don't specify, um, but it didn't look like the same, like, rectangular modern design. I don't know, um, but honestly, for the most part, they felt good and better than a lot of them, like, like bad and just average feeling switches um, on modern mice. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't feel like much has like improved. Something that has improved though, um, thanks for your off stream follow, is this cable. This cable. Oh, you. <laughs> it fucking took out my mouse bungee. So I guess now would be a good time to mention that the cable is so thick and stiff that sometimes it just like uh, forces the little piece of the mouse bungee out. Uh, when I go to remove the cable, um, it doesn't happen every time, but man, this is, this cable's fucking scary. Um, is that even keeping its shape? That is like a straight up replica, dude. Um, but yeah, removing the cable, see, I mean, I don't know, it's always a fucking bloody scene. It does not come out easy. I mean, dude, I, I can't make this up. Um, but yeah, very, very, very stiff cable to say the bare minimum about it. Um. But yeah, clearly um, cables have come a long way in the recent few years because this was an absolute nightmare. And I honestly don't know how people dealt with it. It is really heavy. When I had it in the bungee, it was playable. And that was what was surprising about this mouse, especially with the 125 hertz pulling rate. I'm aware that this mouse can be overclocked. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a lot easier on Windows 7 than Windows 10. So that automatically deterred me. And uh, I was just playing like a 125 hertz pulling rate chad um i am on a 360 hertz monitor so the de difference was 
totally noticeable. Um, and another thing I want to mention is that I was only able to use this mouse on Crunker because Fortnite, I need fucking side buttons. And this mouse, unfortunately, did not have side buttons. Can't really expect it of such an old mouse. Um, but yeah, unlucky. But yeah, I was playing Crunker on 125 hertz polling rate. And uh, I was like, there's no way this is going to be playable. But it was. And uh, this mouse was surprisingly light as well. Well, I guess not really light. Um, but light for what I was expecting. I believe it was below 90 grams. I'll weigh it right now. Um, of course, you can't see the weight on my scale, so I could say it weighs 40 grams. Um, but it is coming in at 82 grams with a bit of cable. So that's, like, just fucking impressive. Um, 82 gram, like, medium to large mouse. And I'm pretty sure this mouse was also considered, like, small at the time. Like, they just straight up did not have actually small mice, which is kind of surprising. Um, and for me, large hand claw grip, this is a very good shape. It's surprising that it hasn't been cloned yet. I'm pretty sure that's why Game Sense is like so keen to clone it and i'll talk more about the shape in a second but first i want to talk about some uh quality issues once again not an issue the mouse is perfect um there's a ton of rattling it seems sounds like there's some fucking like parrots fighting inside the mouse um obviously there is a ton of click wobble and uh i doubt it's a qc issue but the scroll wheel kind of just sucks um but then again it was like one of the first scroll wheels so it's not like they had a lot to uh, work with um it feels very mushy and uh it's surprising like defined steps um but it's not tactile it's definitely like mushy it feels like a fucking linear mouse wheel it has a similar, like, sound and grind as a Zowie wheel, but lacks the tactility. But, um, I don't know. It's impressive because it was one of the first squirrel wheels, and it's like, damn, they put a squirrel wheel on a mouse. Wow, look at this modern mouse. It has a squirrel wheel. Um, next thing, just want to talk about the coding quickly. Um, it feels weird. It feels, like, old-fashioned. It's like a company would never put this on a mouse nowadays. Um, I don't know. It's definitely way... It, for me, it was way too slippery. Um, I don't know if this coating was ever, like, originally white. On the sides, the coating was great, though. If it was like this on the entire mouse, um, it would have been probably grippier in my hands. Um, but that is, like, a minor nitpick. And uh, I'm just trying to, like, think about it. Like, for the time, this mouse was probably fucking packed with features. And I do think that this is a sort of anti-zoomer mouse, because if you have small hands, like little cracked Fortnite kids, and you were to put your hand on this mouse, you would be palm gripping it, um, because while it isn't, like, the longest mouse, it is fucking tall, um, and it doesn't really fill your palm out at the back either, or at least not for me, and I have, like, pretty large hands, um, I kind of compared it to, like, the G Pro wireless shape almost, uh, but definitely with wider flares towards the bottom, and, uh, it's unique, I haven't felt anything like it, um, and I've tried a lot of like popular claw grip shapes. It seems like it's really the one that was left behind. And I can just imagine how annoying it is to be somebody who used this mouse for a long period of time and you just see that companies aren't fucking cloning it. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to the Game Sense one. And now the feet, um, I don't know. These are like hard feet. I was looking at them and then I was like touching them and then I started putting a lot of pressure on them. And I realized like, damn, these are fucking hard mouse feet. I don't understand why. Um, they are just Teflon, and they do glide decently well. This is on the uh, Hayate Atsu, um, but if I were to put a lot of pressure, they would definitely be scratching a lot, which is annoying, so I... I'm not going to say keep that in mind because who the fuck's buying this mouse? Um, the only place you can really get it is like eBay and it's usually like over $40 and I honestly haven't seen many of this colorway. I only see the black one. And from what I can tell, the mouse was priced pretty affordably when it was released, like, f around 50 USD. Um, so think of this as, like, a fucking 20-year-old XM1, and, I don't know, seems pretty based. And I guess the last real thing to talk about is the Intella Eye Sensor, and obviously I'm just not going to be able to fully understand, like, how monumental this sensor was for mice, um, but it's just fucking nuts that this mouse is so old, and I'm able to play, like, modern games and have the tracking be more or less fine. Um, obviously, keeping it at 125 hertz flowing rate, that was kind of just cock-blocking myself, um, but it just still wasn't bad. Like, I'll load up Crunker right now. I guess while on the top, 
topic of sensor should talk about the LOD. Um, my mouse is fully like elevated right now and the sensor is still tracking um, pretty well. Like I could still get fucking bronze Kovac scores um, if it tracked like that all the time. Um, but other than that, the sensor was fine once I got used to the pulling rate. I was extremely perceptible to the difference um, because of the monitor I use. Uh, so whenever I went back to a thousand Hertz pulling rate and then I went to 125, I would just have to readjust because the difference is so massive. But, um, since I've only been playing on 125 Hertz pulling rate for a few hours, I've gotten used to it. And this has really just shown me that, uh, mice are completely useless and whatever mouse you have just fucking use it because clearly you can pick up something from 20 years ago get used to it within an hour feels more or less the same as a super light that shouldn't be the case but you know it is and my entire channel is a waste of time proven by this mouse that is older than me make sure to uh, leave a like and sub thank you goodbye and there is one final thing to mention 400 dpi that is the only option on this mouse took me like legit two swipes to get across both monitors and i feel like the feet and the cable kind of do weigh it down i would love to try a modded one but it's not like a standard cable as far as i know um, but yeah, honestly, this boomer mouse really caught me off guard. I did not expect I was going to be able to like perform decently well with it. Um, and yeah, like I was saying before, I really feel like my channel might just be a complete waste. Just pick up whatever mouse, lol. Um, but yeah, like and sub.